Good morning, dear friends. I am so glad to be with you for a few minutes on the second day of this week, which is the first working day for this week. The Lord in His mercy and faithfulness has given us this day, and it is a gift from Him. And therefore, let us live and glorify Him who is worthy of our praises. Today's meditation is taken from the book of Acts chapter 9 verses 1 to 6 which talks about the conversion of Saul of Tarsus or the Apostle Paul. Acts, this chapter records the conversion of the Apostle Paul. It happened outside of the city of Damascus. It did not happen inside the city in the home of Judas. Verse 11 makes it very clear. And uh, the, this fact is confirmed by two um, reasons. And the number one reason is Paul obeyed the instructions given to him in verse 6. And uh, before he arrived at Judah's house, he already committed himself to be a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ and, um, uh, and, and a witness for him, a, a missionary to the Gentiles of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the second reason is, so that obedience of him shows that he was already a changed person experiencing the new birth. The second reason we believe that he was already a committed follower of Christ by the time he arrived at uh, Judah's house, uh, he is called or addressed uh, as a believer would address. He was addressed as a brother Saul by Ananias, who was sent to by God himself to pray for him that he may receive his sight and then he may be baptized and thus be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so this is... Uh, shown in verses 17 and 18. And uh, in verse 17, we see him praying. Now, this is a spiritual exercise <clears throat> that has been a constant practice with the Apostle Paul. After Paul encountered Jesus, and accepted him as his Lord and Savior, he fasts and prays for guidance with an attitude of deep commitment to God. You know, that tells us something very important for every born-again Christian. What is it? Saving faith and the consequent new birth will always result in believers seeking God for communion with their new Lord and new Master. This desire to be in touch with heaven, this longing to communicate with the new Lord and Master after our conversion to Christ is a natural phenomenon that must be seen and visible in born-again believers. And in Paul, it, is all, it has always been there. In fact, he wrote once in his anonymous epistles, day and night, with tears, he used to pray for all his people in how many places he planned a church. Now, one more lesson from Paul's conversion we may learn. His story is the story of a Saul meeting the right person on the wrong road. Now Saul was on a wrong road. His life was going uh, in a wrong way. And as you know, a wrong road takes you to wrong places. And the wrong places means to wrong people. Uh, for example, 
remember prodigal son comfortably living in his father's house with all the love and all the luxuries and comfort and suddenly some wrong thoughts began to provoke him to take a, a, a decision to leave the home and that means he didn't appreciate the family discipline he wanted to get out of discipline and so he made this decision to get his share of all the properties and converted everything into cash and um, bundled them up in a bag and he went into a lo into a, into a far away city and there what did he do he squandered his wealth his money with a new found friend not realizing that he not only traveled through wrong ways which ended in a wrong city with the wrong people to be his friends they were not really friends they loved his money they discovered he had a lot of money and so as long as his money lasted he had a lot of friends and then they discovered that his purse is now empty now before he started asking us money let us leave him let us go and disappear that's what happened that wrong road that the prodigal son took led him where that led him to be among pigs and hungry and thirsty tired and weak empty stomach he even tried to eat what the pigs were eating but before he could put a hand in it the pigs would finish it off wrong road leading to wrong situation and then you know another person in the old testament samson he took a wrong road and uh, he was born with the plan and purpose of god for his life to be the deliverer of the people of israel and he delivered them for 20 years but how did he end up he also took in between a wrong road and that wrong road led him where to a woman in whose lap he laid his head and he lost his strength and power and he lost the favor of god and his presence where in the lap of a woman a wrong road many people especially young people they don't realize that their own decision will ultimately lead to their destruction and so my friends you be careful and um, Saul had an encounter with the right person on that right uh, on that wrong road his life was going on in a wrong road and that led him into a wrong road but a good things happened to him in that wrong road he met the right person and when jesus encountered saul he was face to face with the truth on that wrong road and there Saul had a choice to make he had two choices before him and one choice was he could respond i don't want you jesus i am right and what i am doing also is right so i don't need you that was one response one decision he also could take another decision which is he could have respond and he would could he he could respond to jesus yes lord what do you want me to do for you and thankfully that was the decision he took and he, by taking that decision he was saying i want to be your servant and i will serve you 
and he chose to be obedient to the vision he had Saul was blind for 3 days and he must have seen more during these 3 days than during his entire lifetime he saw himself standing as Stephen was being stoned to death he saw them and then he heard also he heard Stephen praying he saw himself going from house to house in the city of Jerusalem dragging out men and women and children and uh, dragging them into prison you remember the two thieves on the cross one on the right side and another on the left side of jesus jesus in the middle both of them started um, uh, shouting and cursing jesus but suddenly one of them stopped and he became silent while the other continued to curse jesus but the one who became silent suddenly he realized in a flash of light a vision he had about jesus jesus coming back into his kingdom and he immediately cried out to jesus jesus have mercy on me and remember me when you come back into your kingdom both of them started walking on the wrong road and that wrong road led them to the cross but on the cross one of them saw the light he saw jesus and he heard the words of jesus praying for those who are actually crucifying him and then he heard other things and as a whole he began to realize this must be the true messiah and he cried out my friends if there is anyone listening to me and you know you are walking on a wrong road please stop don't continue in that road the road may be offering you alcohols and drugs and all and and, and uh, girls and women all these things may be offering offered to you but my friends you are on a wrong road which will lead you into the pit of hell from where there is no escape but today while you are still on the road you can change and i pray that the holy spirit will suddenly enlighten you and open your inner eyes to see the danger in which you are by traveling the road that you are walking in and the grace will be given to you to change your direction take a u turn in repentance and in humility come to jesus and cry out to jesus have mercy on me forgive me set me free i want to be obedient to you and i walk in your way that you have set before me the way of life may the lord give you grace and the power of the holy spirit to do the right thing and from the wrong road you will come into the right road The road is narrow but straight and few are walking in it let you be the one who will join them God bless you as you make your choice and your decision to follow Christ Father there may be some who may be uh, making this decision today in response to this message that has come bless that person whether man or woman boy or girl 
young or elderly let them make the right choice to be in the right road and come to eternal life thank you jesus for your grace in jesus name amen god bless you my friend this is a great day enjoy this day and glorify god and rejoice in your new found life in christ jesus amen